Hello, thank you for joining me today at John Galt Solutions. My name is Dr. Holt Wilson. I'm a professor of marketing at Central Michigan University, as well as one of the co-authors of the book, Business Forecasting with Forecast X. In this segment, I will be discussing the use of multiple regression to make a forecast when we're including something called dummy variables to account for qualitative attributes that may affect sales. As you see on your screen, we have column A, the dates, and we have um, quarterly data. Uh, then we have Abercrombie and Fitch sales in thousands of dollars. Then personal income representing the buying power of people, which is in billions of dollars. The unemployment rate as a percent. And then we have two columns that are called Q3 and Q4. And these are dummy variables um, to represent the seasonality. It turns out statistically by using a t-test we find that quarters one and quarter two are not significantly different from one another. The peaks in sales come in quarter three due to back to school sales and quarter four due to holiday sales. So let's look at quarter three. In quarter three if we take a year's worth of data we see that it's zero in the first quarter, zero in the second quarter, one in the third quarter, zero in the fourth quarter and that that pattern continues throughout the rest of the data. So a dummy variable is always zero or one. One to represent an event or a time period, zero when it's not. If we look at quarter four, we see that it's zeros through the first three quarters and then a one in quarter four and that that pattern continues itself through the rest of the data. Now Abercrombie and Fitch brought out a brand they called Rule. Um, and before that brand was introduced, this dummy variable to represent the brand is all zeros. But as we scroll down, we see that at some point they brought out this um, brand in March of 2005. And while that brand was on the market, we have ones for the dummy variable. But then subsequently, Abercrombie and Fitch took that brand off the market. And so then the values for that brand became zeros. For the Gilly Hicks brand, they just brought it out in March of 2007, and so it's ones the rest of the way through our data set, and it was zeros prior to that point because that brand was not in the marketplace. Now to do a multiple regression with data like this, we need to specify ahead of time what we want these dummy variables to be in the forecast horizon. To do that, we'll scroll down to the end of our data, and we'll capture the last year's worth of um, the data and extend that down for four um, quarters or for three years, four quarters each year. So we end up ending our data at September of 2012. Then we want to extend our dummy variables down um, so that they follow the same pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here with um, the December period and copy those and um, paste them in. And we can just paste them in through the um, rest of the period. Okay. And I'll do the same thing for the next quarter. I'll just capture a larger set and extend them down. In this case, I ended up um, going a little beyond the end of the data, so I'll just delete those. Then for the rule brand, I just want to extend zeros throughout my forecast horizon. So I just copy those down. And for the Gilly Hicks brand, I want to capture ones the rest of the way through the data set. So now I have my dates extended for 12 periods and I have my dummy variables extended for 12 periods. To invoke the multiple regression forecast model, I want to capture everything through the entire forecast period, including the dummy variables that I've pre-selected. So I'm going to capture the entire data set, and now we'll go to Forecast X and invoke the model. The first thing we want to do is to check to see that we have the data organized in columns, 
and that we're doing a 12 period forecast and that's a very important here since we've identified some of the variables for those 12 periods and extended our date for 12 periods. We see that the data set contains dates, the data are quarterly, and their labels in the first row. So now we'll go to forecast method and we want to select multiple regression. Here we find multiple regression. Notice that the dependent variable is Abercrombie and Fitch sales, what's in column B. We want to click on the advanced button here and tell it to use the existing values, those values that we put in for the dummy variables and to remove or ignore empty values. And so what's going to happen is forecast X is going to use a little expert system to make a prediction of personal income in the forecast horizon and the unemployment rate in the forecast horizon, but use the values for the dummy variables that we've already put in. Then we'll go to um, statistics. We would want to get the adjusted R-square because we're dealing with multiple regression. Um, we'll want to get the mean absolute percentage error. And we're going to want to click on more statistics. Um, and there under accuracy, get the root mean squared error. And under regression, I'm going to uncheck the ANOVA table. It's not that useful for us in this context. But I want to get the p-values in my coefficient table. So I'll say OK. And then we can go on to reports. Now in this case, we want to get the standard report. So we want to make sure that's checked. And we want to get the audit report. Um, and in the audit report table, we can get the fitted values. So we should be all set. And we'll click on Finish. OK, now we can view our output. This screen shows us um, the um, audit trail um, graph. And we see something sort of strange, that these values drop to 0. And I'll show you how you can eliminate those in the standard report. Down here we have our equation. Um, and um, it's interesting to look at the equation in this form. We'll also see it in a table form below. But we see personal income has a positive slope, unemployment a negative slope, and quarter three a, a positive slope of 105,000 uh, something. Then the fourth quarter an even bigger positive slope. The rule brand has a positive slope indicating it did contribute to sales as well as did the Gilly Hicks brand as shown by this positive slope. So let's scroll down here um, and look at the rest of our uh, results. We have the table that shows our quarterly um, forecasts. Then down below we have the dates, the original values, the fitted values, and the errors from the forecast. And at the very bottom or near the bottom here we have the actual equation in a table and we see the coefficients as we described them earlier. Um, the, Constant term is minus 740,333, positive slope for income, negative for the unemployment rate, and positive for all the other variables. And we see that the t-tests are all pretty good. You might wonder about the t-tests for the um, Gilly Hicks brand. It's very close. We typically want this p-value, which is called a significance level, to be smaller than 0.05. And it actually turns out here to come out to be um, 0 0.10, but this is a for a two-tailed significance value, so we're really only interested in half of that. And you might say, well, half of that, half of um, 0.1 is 0.05, so it's right on the border. But if you look up at the top of your screen, you'll see that it's really 0 .00, 0 .00, I'm sorry, 0 0.099. So if we take half of 0 0.099, we are less than 0 0.05. So we do have a significant effect at a 95% confidence level for the Gilly Hicks brand. And we find that our mean absolute percentage error is 9.18%. The adjusted R-square is 96.63. So we've explained over 96% of the variation in Abercrombie and Fitch sales during this period. 
and the root mean squared error is about 46, almost 47,000. And again, I would compare that to uh, the mean value, and we see that relative to the mean, the standard error is, is relatively small. So now, let's look at the um, standard report, and we see again how well the data is actually fit by the model, but again we see this drop off in the actual values, and that's just an artifact of the data. But we can come down here under the actual sales and select um, the actual Abercrombie and Fitch sales, and you see that they're there as zeros, and if we just push the delete key, you'll see those zeros will disappear, and as you do it, if you watch the graph, you'll see that a line that drops to zero at the end also disappears. So now you have a graphic that would be very useful to show to somebody to explain um, how well the model fit. The yellow line being the, uh, the fitted values and the forecast, and the blue line the actual Abercrombie and fixed sales.